<coughs> okay welcome all today we are going to see the next special function registers of 8051 that is in the first chapter architecture of 8051 which is a microcontroller programming subject of electronics and instrumentation students c18 curriculum 402 is the subject code in the first chapter that is in the previous lessons we have already learned about the basics of this 8051 microcontroller along with some block diagrams functional diagrams of this microcontroller and next we have moved on to the features of 8051 and register bank what are the different types of registers we have and their classification and different registers addresses and what will they do how they will function so we have discussed all these topics and Today we are going to see some of the special function registers in continuation with the August 3rd that is yesterday's lessons. To understand today's lesson students must watch the previous video lessons also then only we can catch up with these topics and can understand what I am going to discuss in this today's lesson very well. So, <coughs> moving on to these today's topics that is serial port SFRs, serial port special function registers. In the features topic of 8051, we have seen that there is a serial port available on the 8051 so in order to function that serial port properly and in order to transmit the data and receive the data serially from 8051 to other externally connected devices we need some registers so in that we have SCON first one is the SCON is serial control SFR SFR means special function register so simply we call SFR so here onwards I will I will call the special function register as SFR only next is SBUF 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 that is serial data buffer register and PCOM power control SFR these three SFRs will be used in the serial port first register SCON register that is serial control is SFR it is a 8 bit bit addressable SFR do not confuse that we have written two times that is 8 bit bit it is a two sentence actually merger into one because it is a 8 bit SFR and it is also a bit addressable SFR those two lines are merged into single line and we simply call it as 8 bit bit addressable SFR you know in any register we have number of bits depending on the number of bits available we can call it as that many number of bits of register and simply a register is nothing but a group of flip flops where flip flop is a single bit memory element and you know we have already discussed that in the previous lessons and it is also bit addressable bit addressable SFR we can call mention that each and every bit of this SFR in the program so 
the type of facility is available to this SFR. If it is not bit addressable, then we have to call entire register, entire SFR register. Though we need only one bit of that SFR in the program, that will be time consuming for the machine, memory consuming. And it also be tedious to write such type of uh, lengthy programs. So if it is a bit addressable, any register if it is bit addressable, then it will be an extra, an additional option, additional facility for that register. And it also makes the program easily readable and understandable and uh, the program execution will also be improved. Second point, it is a serial port mode control register. This one is the serial port mode control register and it is used to control the operation of the serial port. The serial port will be functioning differently different modes so whatever the modes it can function in this 8051 can be selectable and adjustable using this SFR third point this register contains not only the mode selection bits but also the specific bit for transmit and receive specific bit for transmit and receive and the serial port interrupt bits interrupt bits we have already seen about the interrupt <coughs> interrupts of 8051 so do you remember how many interrupts are there in the 8051 please recollect it because we have five interrupts in which Two are external interrupts, external interrupt zero, external interrupt one, and three are internal. In that also, two are timer interrupts, timer zero interrupt and timer one interrupt, and uh, the last interrupt is serial port interrupt. So we have here the SCON register, SCON SFR. This register contains not only the mode selection bits but also the specific Sorry for the interruption. <coughs> so we have serial port interrupt bit also will be mentioned in this particular SFR and as it is a serial buffer we need to serial port we need to transmit or receive the data serially so only at a time at a particular interval of time we can transmit only single bit so whatever the bit we are transmitting that will be mentioned in this SFR itself so it will do three three operations first mode control of the serial port and the bit which is has to be transmitted and received and the interrupt bit serial port interrupt bits so in this slide we have that particular SCON SFR is mentioned in the figure 1.12.4a please draw and uh, write all those bits clearly by reading and by drawing only you can remember each and every register till now we have seen number of SFRs and this is the additional one to that so we can we are keep on adding those SFRs in this 8051 lesson we have to learn more number of SFRs and registers and their structures and block diagrams so each and every student must draw these diagrams draw these registers mention each and every bit also 
the only we can write the code efficiently and understand the code first and we need to understand whatever we are writing and we should write without any syntactical mistakes so that is all possible when you do the perfect learning so in the scon sfr see it is a 8 bit right so we have bit 0 to bit 7 generally we write bit 0 to the right most and bit 7 to the left most left most bit 0 we have r i bit 1 t i bit 2 r b 8 bit 3 t b 8 bit 4 r e r e w bit 5 s m 2 bit 6 s m 1 and bit 7 s m 0 it is the bit arrangement of s con so far and below we have a table describing the function of each and every bit of this s con so far so first see the zeroth bit or bit zero that is r i receive interrupt flag r i means receive interrupt flag the function set by hardware when byte is received set means it will become one the bit zero which is representing the receive interrupt flag will be set to one by the hardware part when the byte is received feared by software after servicing so feared by software after after servicing the interrupt flag after it has been the interrupt whenever it is hardware occurred and when the microcontroller processed it using the interrupt service routine in software <coughs> if it is assigned and if the interrupt is clear if it is serviced then automatically this RI flag will be clear okay next bit one is TI transmit interrupt flag this way also this is same this is also same with this RI concept that is set by hardware and by it is transmitted and cleared by software after servicing yes it is byte transmitted only because we will transmit bit by bit but at a particular uh, we will select one byte one byte of uh, data and then transmit each bit separately so when we know when the byte is transmitted when the whole byte is transmitted we will set this flag and clear the flags and bit 2 is rb8 receiver bit 8 receiver bit 8 in mode 2 and 3 this is the ninth bit that was received in the bracket cleared by hardware if ninth bit received is logic 0 set by hardware if ninth bit received is logic 1 in mode 1 if sm2 is equal to 0 rb8 is the stop bit that was received in mode 0 rb8 is not used see what are these modes actually if we learn last bit that is bit 7 to bit field then we can understand this fourth third second bits bit 765 these are SM0, SM1 and SM2. So we will come to fourth third that is RAN, TB8, we can understand after we learn about this SM0, SM1 and SM2. What are the modes available? Okay. So serial port mode control bit 0 and SM1 is mode control bit 1 and SM2 is control bit 2. Three mode control bits right so these mode control bits sm0 is set or cleared by software and sm1 is also set or cleared by software and sm2 it is also known as multiprocessor communication enable bit most applications 8051 is not used in multiprocessor environment and sm2 is zero so we can simply sm2 will be you can simply put sm2 is equal to zero 
So we will have SM0 and SM1 effectively for this S1 SF1. Not mentioned here, so we can learn within the coming lessons. Or if it is not in the syllabus, we don't need to go into that much of information. So, there will be different modes available for this serial port. So, depending on the mode selection bits SM0, SM1, and SM2, simply we can SM2 put the SM2 is to 0 because we don't use. This is of even in multiprocessor uh, communication and depending on SM0, SM1, we can work the serial port in different modes and the REN, Receiver Enable Control Bit and TB8, Transmit Bit 8 and the REN, Receiver Enable Control Bit, set are cleared by software to enable or disable serial data reception. So, serial data whether we have to receive or not, it will be set up here by this software port. And the transmit bit 8, TB8, it is the ninth bit that will be transmitted in modes 2 and 3. It is set or cleared by software as desired. See, these modes 2 and 3 are depending on this SM0 and SM1. So there are minimum two number of bits for selection of the modes. So, 2 by 2, so 2 for 2, we have. Four types of modes: mode zero, mode one, mode two, and mode three. And we don't have this modes description here, but we can understand that there are four modes minimum. Eight in modes two and three, it is the ninth bit. It was received. In mode one, if S M two is for zero or eight is the stop bit. The was received in mode zero or eight is not. Use it. So we can understand these bits in the <coughs> modes of S buff serial port. The bit address of this uh, S1 is 98H, 98H2 and 98H2, 98H2. So this is the bit arrangement of S1 SFR serial control. SFR. The mode control bits are there, interrupt bits are there, right? Now moving on to the next SFR that is SBUF, Serial Data Buffer Register. Computers must be able to communicate with other computers in modern multiprocessor distributed systems. One cost effective way to communicate is to send and receive data bits serially. The 8051 has serial data communication circuit that uses a register SF, uh, SBUF to hold the data. SBUF is physically two registers, one is write only and is used to hold the data to be transmitted out of the 8051 via transmit data pin. The other is read only and holds received data from external sources via RXT pin. Both mutually exclusive registers use addresses. 99H address 99H. See, SBUF is basically two registers. It is the one register is write only. You need you can only write into that particular register. That is the data which has to be transmitted will be stored in this SBUF register and at a time single bit will be transmitted to the pin TXP of 801 and the other register is read only because we can read from the register only we cannot write it to the register because it is a read that means we get the data from the other external device via the RXT pin receive data pin of 8051 and the register bus is 1998H these both are mutually exclusive registers so at a time only one register one register will function and the third register is PCOM that is power control SFR PCOM is a power control register of 8 bit length it is vector address is BT7H 
it is a byte addressable register it is a byte addressable register so we cannot bit address it is used for power control and baud rate selection the pcon register also contains two general purpose clients and a double baud rate bit the pcon register also contains two general purpose flags and a double baud rate bit figure shows the bit pattern see draw this figure everyone must draw this register that is the bit arrangement of this pcon register it will give two minutes to draw this yes i can wait for two minutes because you must draw you must learn from the writing and understanding both both are important just listening to this class will give you only uh, 30 to 40 percent of learning by drawing you can learn another 20 to 30 percent but when you use in the real world application or in the practical program writing then you can learn learn 100 percent Let's go on this bit pattern arrangement. Now, see bit 0 to bit 7. We have 8 bits that first bit that is bit 0 is ideal, ideal mode bit, and bit 1 is PD power down bit, bit 2 is GF0, and bit 3 is GF1, and bit 4 to 6 are not used and reserved for future purpose also, and bit 7 is the S mode that is double baud rate bit in the below table we have mentioned only the names of this particular bits s mod is double baud rate bit and 644 are not implemented and third gf1 is general purpose user plan general purpose user plan bit one for set and clear by program GF0 is general purpose user plug bit 0. Set or clear by program itself. And the PD is nothing but power down bit. Ideal is nothing but ideal mode bit. And the bit address is from C8H to CFH. This is a Now moving on to the next SFR that is parallel IO ports SFR. In the H051 microcontroller, there are four ports for IO operation. They are port 0, port 1, port 2, and port 3, as we know already. Each IO port takes 8 pins. Yes, in the pin diagram of H051 microcontroller, a total of 32 pins that is 4 into 8, 32 are occupied by the four IO ports we have already discussed this topic all four ports are bi-directional each pin will be configured as input or output or both under software control the functions of four ports are listed in below table see this one the port 0 is used as an IO port used as a bi-directional low order address that is ad0 to ad7 
and data bus for external memory when we connect external memory we need to access that external memory through some pins and data bus so these port 0 pins port 0 0.0 to port 0 0.7 the 8 bits are used as bidirectional low order address and data bus low order why call because the external external data or program memory can be of the order of 64 kilobytes that is you can collect maximum 64 kilobytes of external memory to the 8051 64 minus 2 power 6 into 2 power 10 so we have 2 power 16 bytes so it is a 16 16 bit address 16 bit address will be there for the address or data 16 bit memory address will be there so in order to access the access that 16 bit address we need 16 pins the port 0 has only 8 pins so we configure that port 0 as low order that is bit 0 to bit 7 that is 80 0 to 87 bits low order address and data bus for external memory the port 1 used as an IO port simple IO port just one no extra functions will be assigned to this port 1 and port 2 is a IO port and it is also high order address bus for external memory it is for high address high order address bus that is A8 to A15 and the port 3 is used on an IO port that is input or output port or used for alternate function as shown in below what is the alternate function so p3 pins each pin we have some special function so each pin of port 3 is assigned some special function that is port 3.0 has rxd pin that is serial data we have seen in the previous slides that is about the serial port we have rxd and txt through which the data is transmitted and received and transmitted so the rxd pin is p3.0 <coughs> serial data input because rxd means receive the data receive from the external source so we are receiving so it is a serial data input input to the bit 051 and p3.1 is a txt that is output we are transmitting the data from the 8051 to the external sources it is a txt and p3.2 is a int0 external interrupt 0 p3.3 is a int1 external interrupt 1 and p3.4 is t0 external timer 0 interrupt timer 0 interrupt and t1 is external timer 1 input 3.6 is WR right signal external memory write signal and RD is external memory read signal external memory read signal so like this we have for each and every port some port pins are assigned some special functions remaining are simply we can use them as IO ports IO pins okay but for this particular port 3 has each and every pin has some special function yes we need to remember all this all this ports and each and every pin also when we are writing the program these these are very very important which pin has to be connected that means i have used the word interface rights for that interfacing which port has to be used which port pin has been connected to which port of the external or interfacing device so how the data is transmitting how much voltage has to be given to this so these are all coming to the picture when we are practically designing any electronic circuit for particular application that is, that is what the designers will do that is what the engineers actually do more work with the brain
okay and some of the additional information about this SFRs SFRs along with their direct addresses directly we can access them in the program using this addresses first one is the accumulator that has E0 0 E0 H hexadecimal address E0 and for the B register we have F0 PSW register T0 and stack pointer 81 TPL data pointer low byte we have DPTR data pointer which is a 16 bit register and we have divided that into DPL and TPH lower and higher bytes the lower byte address is 82H and the higher byte address is 83H port 0 we have 80H port 0 address and port 1 we have 90 port 2 A0 port 3 is B0 IP inter priority register B8H I inter enable register A8H you can simply call A8 T mod timer counter mod control 89 T com timer R counter control 88 TH0 timer higher byte timer 0 high byte 8C TL0 timer R counter 0 low byte 8A TH1 timer R counter 1 high byte 8T and TL1 timer 1 low byte that is 8B SCON serial control 88 S buff serial data buffer 99 P con that is power control 87. We no need to remember these, but when we are writing in the program, if others use these addresses, we need to be able to understand, we need to be able to grasp whether address is nothing but a register address which is an SFR. Now the star points, the star S control, we have T con, we have stars, IE has star, star is meant bit address code. So these are our bit address code, port 0, port 1, port 2, port 3 and accumulator and B, PSW, the star marked <coughs> registers are bit addressable registers. And any address used in the program must start with a number, thus the addresses are E0, F0, A0, etc as specified as 0 e 0 0 f 0 0 e 0 etc so that's why we call it as 0 e 0 0 f 0 failure to use this number convention will result in an assembler error when the program is assembled the following two points should be noted about the sfr addresses that is sfrs have addresses between 80 and ffh between 80 to FFH. Yes, all these addresses are in the range of 80 to FFH, and not all the address space of 80 to FFH is used by the SFRs. The unused locations are reserved and must not be used by the 8051 programmer. So, we need to take into consideration that these addresses should not be used. 80 to FFH address should, should not be used while writing the program that is for the data store or uh, from accessing some other things only these sfrs can be accessed and the unused address space should not be accessed by the programmer 80 to fwh because we have the register addresses from 00 to how much 1f right the total internal memory 128 bytes that is 00 to 7f 0 to 7f 7f after 7f we have this 80 to ffh address <coughs> and now the important topic that is the draw the pin diagram of 8051 microcontroller and specify the purpose of each one we will see today only the diagram part we will uh, learn the purpose of each pin in the next class 
students must draw this diagram now it's today itself then you need to draw each and every pin with the particular uh, addresses or some applications that is the multiplexing signals that is if you see the port 3 p3.0 bracket we have rxt is the 10th pin okay yes you need to draw this entire diagram and it is for the diploma exams or uh, we take exams we can expect a direct question 10 marks question or long answer question this question directly that is we can expect that is draw the pin diagram of 805 mm microphone and specify the purpose of each pin that can be asked and many a times it is already been asked in the exams for the diagram for the drawing of diagram only you will get 4 to 5 marks and for the explanation you will get the 5 marks so that is the importance of this diagram not only this diagram entire chapter will have different diagrams and you need to draw them clearly first to see some introductory points of is a package in a 40 pin DIP DIP means dual inline package this is the different whether is different types of packaging ICs and that particular one is DIP that is dual inline package this type of one that is two sides we have the pins right and it is in a square or sorry rectangle shape so the shape and two sides we can call it as DIP dual inline package so it is a 40 pin IC and the important to note that many pins of 8051 are used for more than one function see the diagram more than one function so most of the pins see from 40 to 21 this side the right side and 20 to this up to 10 so almost to three fourth of the IC pins are used for multiplex so more than one function but only the limited that means 1 2 9 and only the 10th 4 10th 4 10th point sorry 10th sorry 20th pin and the 40th pin only these numbers only you will be used for the single function the alternate functions of pin charge code in parenthesis that is in the bracket in the bracket we have seen the alternative functions the 16 pins are used for single function the remaining 24 pins may be used for one of two entirely different functions that is 24 into 2 that is 48 functions we are using 24 pins for more than one that is two functions so 48 functions are utilized and you can access from these 24 pins only 24 pins only the remaining 16 pins are used for single function figure shows the pin diagram and the description of pin is follows so this is the pin diagram first see clearly first pin one pin so we, we have 1 to 40 not like uh, bit 0 to bit 7 for 8 bits we don't use bit 0 that is pin 0 to pin 39 we can simply use the numbers actual numbers that is 1 to 40 first pin to 8th pin 1 to 8 we have port 1 port 1 it has 8 pins right it has 8 pins so port 1.0 to port 1.8 sorry port 1.0 to 1.7 next the ninth pin is RST reset pin and 10th to 20 you see it is a port third port three but port has different function for each and every pin port 3.0 has save data pin 3.1 is transmit data we have seen this right in the previous slides previous topics 3.2 is int 0 bar interrupt 0 interrupt timer 0 bar interrupt timer 1 bar t0 timer 0 and timer 1 write bar pin read bar pin and 18th and 19th is 18th pin and 19th pin is external external crystal crystal frequency oscillator signal is connected to these pins two pins external one and external two 
crystal one and crystal two you can saw but there is only single crystal but it will be connected between these two pins and 20th pin is grown and from the 21 point to 21 to 28 that is a8 to a15 port 2 port 2.0 to port 2.7 address higher order address a8 to a15 29th pin is PSEN program status enable bar pin and 30th pin is ALE address latch enable this is programmable underline in the parenthesis we have seen this program and 31 is external accessible external accessible that is VPP and port 30 point sorry 32 to 39 we have port 0 port 0 that is port 0 1 0 2 0 0.7 we have ad 0 lower order address and data points both ad 0 to ad 7 and the last pin that is 40th pin is vcc that is the plus 5 volts so this is the pin diagram of 8051 that is in the bracket 40 pin DAP package. So you can simply write it as 8051. Okay. So please draw this diagram. Now itself we have uh, three more minutes to conclude the clause. In the meantime, please draw the diagram. So in the initial, in the first time, you may take more than three minutes to draw this pin diagram. But when you practice it, when you practice it, you can simply draw it in within one minute also and there is a simplified version also in the previous in the coming topics so this is categorization of 8051 if you see this is a simple structure this is we cannot call it this as a pin diagram because each and every pin has to be mentioned but we have simplified diagram that is 8051 categorization topic if in the exams if you don't remember the each and every pin then you can draw this and get a two to three marks easily in the case you don't remember the entire pins so, but now 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 and until the exam for you must remember this one this diagram only don't use that simplified version okay so draw the diagram all of you i will give you two minutes then afterwards I will conclude the video lesson. Please draw the diagram. That is 8051 pin diagram. Topic name is 8051 pin diagram. The diagram should be eligible. Legible, sorry. Legible means one can easily see and understand and it should be a good fragrant to the eye eye of freedom that means you cannot draw half of the pins in one page and half of the pins in another way so keep a separate page for this pin pin diagram draw the entire diagram in a single page you can use both any that means portrait mode or in the vertical Mode, landscape mode or portrait whatever comfortable to you but draw the entire diagram in a single page only So a quick recap of today's lecture that is we have seen the SFR's remaining special function register of uh, and continues with the August 3rd lesson that is SCON register first we have seen about serial control that is 8 bit and we have seen this bit arrangement and each and every bit then we have moved on to SFR that is serial bot 
serial data buffer register and then afterwards p con power control sfr we have seen the bit arrangements now we have moved on to the parallel wave ports sfr each and every port what it will do that means any multiplexing signals or any special functions are sent to this any of the ports we have particularly port 3 has some different uh, kind of arrangement so we have learned about this and we have seen the addresses each and every address of the sfr and then we have moved on to the topic that is pin diagram and we have completed the diagram topic only we didn't see of the any of the pin arrangement that means each and every pin explanation we will see in the tomorrow's class so with this today i conclude today's lesson but please draw the diagram after i conclude also you can pause the video and draw the diagram you must draw before coming to the before watching the tomorrow's lesson you should keep this diagram with you because um, when i am explaining this pins uh, i cannot go each and every time that is this here this means this pin is there this is connected to that this is the multiplexing uh, another function assigned to this pin so i can directly explain the ports in a single slide only so i cannot go like this it will be not understandable and it will not be good for the people who are watching this video so please draw the diagram at home to complete it and be it keep it with you before watching the tomorrow's video lesson thank you thank you all right